Hello and welcome back to another An Old Man Watches and today we're going to be talking about a movie that I think is actually very very good uh, and that everyone uh, should see uh, which is not something that I do all that often on here um, normally I'm talking about why you shouldn't see a movie but uh, the movie we're going to talk about today is a cracker it's the 1978 adaptation of Invasion of the Body Snatchers uh, and I wanted to specifically call out that it's the 1978 version, number one, because that's the best known, but also uh, because there have been at least four film adaptations uh, of the novel The Body Snatchers. <clears throat> this is the best known, uh, the most famous, um, probably has the biggest name cast. Uh, it's by no means the only good adaptation of the film. Uh, and at some point I'll be talking about uh, other movies that either owe a great debt to this story or that uh, are, in fact... Uh, also adaptations of this story. Uh, but what is Invasion of the Body Snatchers about, other than obviously Body Snatchers invading? Well, basically we're talking pod people from space coming to Earth and replacing humans with doppelgangers that are physically identical uh, but lack any of the emotions of the original. Uh, and once their, you know, their surreptitious invasion of the planet is discovered, the aliens attempt to sell their coming as a positive. All of the experiences and knowledge of the human being that they replace are retained, but none of the fears and hatreds. It's like, you know, I'm you, but better. And obviously, our main characters not sold on this idea, do their best to escape this face. Fate. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a really well done movie. Why is it a really well done movie? Well, we're going to talk about that, obviously. That's the point of being here. Why is this the one that has, has stuck around? What are the three things that I want to call out? Um, to tell you, you know, like why this film of the four is the one with the, the the strongest cultural impact. Why this is the invasion of the body snatchers movie, basically. And the first of those things is when it was made. Uh, it was made obviously nineteen seventy eight. Uh, Cold War going strong, uh, and this is a film about paranoia and suspicion and hidden enemies who look just like us and who are selling their infiltration as a better way to live. Uh, it's the Cold War, you know, through the guise of alien invasion. You know, if you replace the alien invader with communist infiltrators, you know, you've got the same movie except without the gooey space monster stuff. Um, and it should be noted that this is far from the first or last time that a parallel between alien invasion and communist infiltration was drawn in a film. This has been happening since at least the 50s. Um, uh, but few of the movies were this good. And also, few of them came at such a particularly resonant time. So it's important to realise that like 1973 to 1975 was a massive recession for the US and the UK and the West in general. Really difficult financial time from 1973 to 1975, uh, partly as a result of the um, original oil crisis, uh, partly as a result of other factors, and that that economic turmoil continued well after that three-year period. We saw what, we, what they called stagflation, which was a stagnant economy with low jobs and wages growth, but rampant inflation. So prices soaring upwards, you know, and people either unable to get jobs or underemployed or not being paid very well for the jobs they were doing. This is a time when most people's lifestyles in the West were going backwards. That might sound familiar to some of you today. Um, the US had also, obviously in 1975, had withdrawn from Vietnam and seen a, a, you know, another country fall to communism. Um, so if ever there was a time when Western society was genuinely worried that it would lose the Cold War by some means other than it going hot. I mean, this was probably it. This was a time when the West was looking at itself saying, is this, are we work? Is this working? I mean, in the UK, um, you know, during the 70s, they had a period where the government had to basically, the, the government couldn't supply power to businesses. And they actually had to tell businesses you could only run like three days a week. And they had rolling, you know, they had rolling blackouts, and you know, there were serious, serious economic problems in the West during this time. Uh, and this movie, you know, coming, you know, sort of at the tail end of that, probably um, caught on to a lot of that. Like, you know, are we losing here? Is our way of life crumbling? Uh, so yeah, I think it's a particularly resonant time. But the movie had to be good 
or it wouldn't have resonated and the movie is good so i think you know it's not just down to the timing but i think the timing did contribute so one of the ways in which the movie is good and it's a way that i don't normally tend to notice in films is the soundtrack the music i'm as i said i'm not usually want to notice music in a film unless it's notably bad or inappropriate so if you um have a soundtrack that it you know doesn't seem like it fits the kind of movie tuneful flute music flute music in a in like a horror film for instance um or just you know it's just really really bad um the ninth you know, the 30 year anniversary edition of the night of the living dead has a catastrophically awful new soundtrack for instance catastrophically awful everything about the 30th anniversary edition of night of the living dead by the way is catastrophically awful avoid at all costs uh see the original um but this film you know to get back on track is an exception to that not really noticing the music thing um this film uses discordant unsettling noises the use of sound is is you know both environmental and musical is one of the most effective weapons in its arsenal as the sense of tension and wrongness ratchets up throughout the film that so does the the sense of tension and wrongness about the music i mean i know you know, let, let to be clear this film has a tight script solid direction and good performances and they all really really are important but the soundtrack absolutely deserves recognition and because this is a horror movie of course it got none uh from uh from uh award ceremonies like but it is it's fantastic it's really really good feature of the film not music that i would like listen to for fun but absolutely great for the movie uh and the final thing that i wanted to call out uh is that ending and look the end the ending of this movie the final kind of sequence from this film has become something of an internet meme uh which possibly robs it of some of uh, some of its power for people who, who are seeing the film for the first time today or you know now not just necessarily this day obviously um but look let's face it it became a meme because it had power uh, and i think it still works very effectively um now maybe you know what i'm talking about maybe you, you, you've gone oh yes i know what he means i know, I know the ending yep uh, in which case you, you know, like you probably get what i'm saying hopefully you're nodding and agreeing yep it is it is a really effective ending it really works it's clear why it became a meme uh but look if you don't know you are you know like really i mean unless you're like a total weenie who cannot do horror and and if you are you know even though i've just used the word weenie that's cool not every movie is for every person and if 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 you know this is the kind of thing that's going to give you bad dreams don't watch it because you know like i don't want you to have bad dreams uh but if you if you have any kind of appreciation for for creepiness and horror uh yeah this is this is a fantastic example of the genre and if you haven't seen it see it really do um so that's invasion of the body snatchers really good movie uh, highly recommend it uh what am i going to talk about next time oh well, it's going to be a little bit different i'm going to talk about gamera um spelt uh, in this poster with two m's uh usually spelt with one most of the rest of the time um that happens when you're transliterating a, a foreign language obviously uh and i'm specifically going to look at the first three films this is a, a, you know a franchise of films there's been a bunch of them i'm specifically going to look at the first three uh from the 1960s and talk about uh mostly what doesn't work uh, and what changes over the course of the movies rather than uh, than what works because i think what works is a reasonably limited number of things um but you know obviously it did well enough to have multiple movies uh but yeah so we'll be talking about that next time i uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, catch you in the next one